we now return to those bonehead detectives. Let's dig up some more dirt on our good buddies, the boneheads. Can't we get some historical perspective on these hard-headed guys? You want perspective? I've got tons of perspective. Let's take a look at my timeline. Huh. It's about time. There's always time for a timeline, time for minutes. <laughs> Pretty punny. And timely. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's Allie over there on the right, in the present. Now let's find something we think of as really old, like the pyramids. But that's only 4,000 years ago. The first caveman didn't show up until 2 million years ago. And that's nothing compared to when the dinosaurs lived. The boneheads appeared about 130 million years ago. And they pretty much lived life to the fullest until the end of the Cretaceous period about 65 million years ago. So now that Mike Trebold has enlightened us with his reconstruction of the most complete Pachycephalosaurus skeleton ever assembled, we can finally ask the question, what is the deal with that head? Well now, Sam, back in the 1800s, when the bonehead skulls were first found, they thought that these dinosaurs needed extra big heads to hold their extra big brains. That sounds like an old idea. Oh, it is. Then forget about it. Let's find out what the bonehead experts are saying. This is my man, Bob Bakker, and he asked the question... Boneheads. Why? When the first boneheaded dinosaur was found the last century, it was clear they weren't nearly as bright as their domed forehead would indicate. This dome was not full of brains, it was full of solid bone. Mm -hmm. Why? A very old idea was... These animals had outlived their Darwinian clock. They're revolving every which way, sprouting bumps and tchotchkes and thingamabigs and domed heads for no reason at all. That's an old idea, and it's a bunk. In fact, this small brain, armored four-headed dinosaur, was a beautifully designed fighting machine. I love Allie! Hey, look, they're fighting over you. Like, I would date the split end. Uh, no, that's a quarterback. Oh. He's going for the touchdown! He could make it, folks! Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This helmet isn't enough to really protect this delicate box. If you want to tackle with your helmet, you gotta lose the brains which is exactly what this dinosaur did. It's got a dome up here, but there are virtually no brains. The dome is solid bone. Wait, is Bakker saying that football players don't have any brains? Uh, that could get him in some trouble after the game. I think Bob can take care of himself. And all he's really saying is that if you take a look at that solid dome bonehead, you can't help but think football helmet. Ouch. And it's a widely held theory that the Boneheads had these violent headbutting contests to scare off rivals and predators. I don't know. It seems like an awful big leap from football player to Pachycephalosaurus. Well, it's not just football players. There are a lot of animals today who do the same kind of thing. Look at these guys. See? They butt heads too. And these rams. Same thing. All right. Football players are not the only animals that butt heads. But we still don't know exactly why they did it. Here we are at the Smithsonian. And this guy here is paleo detective Ralph Chapman. Looks like Ralph's working on some bonehead skulls, too. Good eye. Ralph took a careful look at a bunch of packy skulls, and believe it or not, he thinks that they were knocking themselves out in the name of love. If the dome of Pachycephalosaurus was used primarily for defense against predators, you would expect the domes of the females to be the same shape as the dome of the males, because both need to avoid getting eaten by those predators. The alternative, that the dome was used in sexual combat, such as front butting or butting of the flank, you would make a prediction that the dome of the males would be much better developed dome relative to the female, which has a smaller, flatter dome. In our analyses, the results show exactly that. Males would have the bigger domes because in nature, they would be the ones to fight over becoming top dog to have the right to mate with the females. And besides, males are the only ones dumb enough to do this kind of behavior. Now, back in his laboratory, our old friend Mike Trebold has been working on his own theory. He questions the whole idea of headbutting. This discovery has answered several questions about whether or not pachycephalosaurs could butt heads or not. As you can see, the skull is very large in comparison to the size of the neck vertebrae. 
and the neck vertebrae also have a very strong natural curve. And as you can see in this model that I have here, in its natural articulation, everything is fine, but when you try to straighten the neck to ram the skull, you dislocate the vertebrae. And they simply could not do that. Mark Goodwin agrees with Trebo. Headbutting just doesn't make sense, especially if you're taking a Pachycephalosaurus to the bowling alley. A bowling alley? Headbutting is a popular theory. It, it's in all the dinosaur books. I don't think it happened. I don't think they're capable of doing it. And I'd like to change that idea. The surface of a bowling ball is very much like the surface of a pachycephalosaur skull, both big and very round. When you have two pachycephalosaurs colliding together, they have to be lined up perfectly in order to make contact. If they're not, they'll glance off each other. This is when we have serious problems. This would result in injury to the animals and perhaps death. I still don't buy it. Why would the pachy skulls be so thick if they didn't butt heads? They may look thick to you, but Mark put that skull under a microscope, and guess what he saw? Paleontologists have described the domes of pachycephalosaurs as being solid bone. In fact, they feel and sound very solid. When you look at these skulls under a microscope, you see a much different structure. In fact, what you see is a honeycomb structure of bone. It's full of holes, just like the theory of headbutting. Well, if the helmet theory doesn't fit and the packies didn't butt heads, then why did they have, to quote Bob Bakker, Bumps and tchotchkes and thingamabigs. Look, this bone was definitely made for ramming into something. Thank you. I don't see them lining up 100 meters apart and charging at each other. Instead, I see them headbutting from close up and wrestling until one of them gets a headache and just gives up. This isn't for head-to-head -head ramming. With a head like this, you want to aim into your opponent's chest. Better yet, a blunt disabling blow to the stomach. Like this? And this. Uh, all right, I think these guys are uh, getting tired. Let's move on. All right. Well, here comes Peter Dotson, yet another paleontologist with his own theory about a different kind of dueling dinosaur. But instead of going to football practice, he likes to hang out at the gym. <laughs> yet another sports analogy. Dotson watches the heavyweight sparring in the ring to get an idea of how male triceratops would battle for the attention of the female. A bull triceratops comes out of the forest into a clearing and looks across the clearing and sees another bull at the other end of the, the clearing. He's not happy with this sight. He rocks his head side to side. He stomps his foot, lifts his legs, he urinates, puts his scent around the ground. He tosses his head to the sides and discovers that the uh, clearing is filling with females coming to watch the struggle, listening to the sounds and sights. And he dips his head more, and he rolls his head side to side, and he is really furious now. And finally, all out of breath, our animal fails. He lowers his head, and he disengages. He's beaten, he backs off, he backs off, he backs off, and finally, he turns and slinks off into the dark forest gloom. Oh, poor thing. Oh, you're such a sucker. Oh! Back in a paleo minute.